hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another video and this is the part two of our previous video in which we were talking about a blog api using nest.js we were using mongoose nest.js and we were writing the blog apis like user authentication apis posts comments all these different set of apis we were creating we have already done the setup we have already written the schemas models you can see the post schema, category schema, post schema, and then user schema, address schema. And we have understood the class structure that for each and every property, you have to define the prop. For the virtual property, you will not define the prop because virtual properties are aggregated properties. Those does not exist in the MongoDB collection like full name, like posts, right? Posts is aggregated data, which we are going to fetch from the posts collection okay so we have done this similarly in the post collection or post model you can see the posts relationship with the author post relationship with the category because a single post can have a multiple category single post will have a single author so this is an object you can see this reference this is referring to the user user collection this is referring to the category collection but this is an array in the props right because this is one too many a single post can have a multiple categories right so we have defined all these collections now we can start writing user service so how to write a simple service is we always define injectable and then we start writing class so here we are talking about users service and we will define constructor and we will do the dependency injection inside we will do the dependency injection of uh, all the required things which we need inside a service it's better i import by myself uh, import injectable this we are getting from nest cs common okay and we also need because now we are going to because we are in service and we need uh, a pro proper way to access mongodb collection so what we will do is we will use inject model and inject model is coming from nest.js mongoose and we need model that is coming from mongoose okay now inside constructor we will start dependency injection we are going to use inject model so this inject model we are going to use to inject the models inside the service and here we are going to use user.name this is the model and this is going to be referred as user model private user model and this is of type model and we have to define the document here inside user model user schema we created a document i think a user document so we are creating user document from user schema because user schema if you look into user schema i think we have a type defined here okay we missed it so we can define export type user document this is common for all the collections either it can be of type user or it can be of type document which is coming from mongoose okay document from mongoose we can import that so this is how we are injecting it uh, let's see what is the problem with this user model is of type this user dot name we need to import a user in our service and user model we can import in the same way so we can simply do is import user and user document 
these are the two things we are importing from user collection and this we are importing from user dot schema okay so we are good and then do i need to have an access to any other service we will decide that what all other things we need and here we can start writing the methods get by email right and here you are going to pass email as a string and we are going to call a method const user equal to await this dot user model now we can access this dot user model dot find one all these methods find one based on the email and here you can do populate here you can populate different things like i wanted to populate path which is posts right and you can also explicitly specify what additional things you wanted to populate inside whatever we are getting inside that i i am also looking for the path categories so you can see internally how it is aggregating the data okay and what it is looking for populate and we got the data after this let we can do the check if we didn't get the user so we will throw the user not found exception otherwise we will return user plain and simple get by email right similarly there are other methods we can do is get by id here the only difference is instead of email we will use get by id here we are using id which is an object id and here we can simply do is predefined method find by id and you can directly pass the id instead of passing an object and we it can also populate the same thing now another thing is the create not found exception we can import this is going to come from nest js common so find by id find by email and then next thing is the create so in create uh, we first of all need to create a dto and all let's say i'm putting any for now we will define the dto in which you are getting the payload okay and here we can do is this dot user model and you can pass the user data this dot user model payload data and then here we can do is await let's say this is the created user and here we need to once the user is created so what we are doing here is simply this dot user model and we are passing the object right so this should be able to create a user and once this is done on created user we can populate the information okay and then once you are doing so exec i think there is a populate method exec because it is a promise now it will become a promise and you can put await there created data user data so this is how we will create the user and you can return the created user dot save i mean this is kind of similar what we do is we create the object and then we do the save like const user equal to new user pass the data and then user dot save this is how we do it in the express this is also something similar this is we are just deciding okay after saving what data we want to populate then we have a delete delete means if you are deleting a user then you have to delete the posts delete the tags delete the categories and you have to delete all the resources which are associated with that user okay this is complaining await this dot user model
oh sorry i think my bad we have to create the object of this and this object dot save we have to create a user dot save if you are not doing populate then we have to do cre return await created user dot save but we are already doing ex ex easy populate so we don't need to do uh, await now so we are creating a user model object and then doing dot save on top of that delete we can write later delete means you are deleting a user and then we are getting the posts for that user and then uh, we have to delete those posts created by that user all the posts right so that can be done in different ways you might have not heard about the connections or the transactions in the mongoose but they exist let's say i wanted to delete a user so what i'm doing is here i will get a user id which i wanted to delete and this is of type string okay so for starting the connection now we are writing a mongoose uh, and nest.js application we can inject the connection so here what we will do is this is the first and then private read only connection i think it is mongoose dot connection and we have to add annotations inject connection i think this should come from nest.js mongoose inject connections and then mongoose we are already importing we can import everything from mongoose everything as mongoose okay mongoose dot connection this is good now okay now how to start a transactions and do all these things so what we are doing is we are trying to delete a user right and this is a kind of uh, we can use the transactions here okay how we do it first of all we will get the session i have also not used it uh, in mongoose at least i have used it in the sql database and when we are writing type orm and sqlize but in mongoose also this is a kind of possible which i have seen in my latest content so what we can do is first of all we'll get a session this dot connection dot start session okay once we have a session session dot start transaction okay so session dot start transaction and then we can do try catch and then we can play with this if things are not good we can also add finally block try catch finally and what we will do is in finally session dot end session session dot end session if uh, because we need to end it either you are in the try or either you are in the catch and then await session dot abort session if we are in the catch if we are in the try everything is good then await session dot commit transaction because everything was successful we were able to delete the user we were able to delete the posts and now we can commit the transaction so here const user equal to uh, await this dot user model this dot user model dot find by id and delete is the method which i can recall and you can just pass the user id here if it, it is able to find and then it will just delete and then you can populate the results i mean either it is deleted but still you can populate the posts list of the posts and 
attach the session with this. Okay, so this is how you can attach the session with this transaction. And now if we find the user, if we didn't find any user, then we can simply throw this user not found exception. That means we were not able to find we and we didn't delete anything. All right. Otherwise, if we find the user, we actually have deleted it, but we also need to delete the posts created by the user. So we are already populating all the posts created by the user. And we can actually run a loop onto that. So await this dot. Now we can call a post service here. Call post service and delete posts one by one based on IDs because ID is how we are getting. We already have the IDs in the posts array. Everything is good. Session dot commit transaction, otherwise about or other, and finally we will end the session. Right? This is fun writing it. Correct. So this is a user service. Now user service will be using the post service. So we somewhere we are going to write post service, which actually dealing with the posts, create, update, delete, assign, all these things will be done there. And let's write the post service. Then we also need to create post controller service, category controller, category service. Okay, so now let's create post service. So we already have a post schema, post document we have. And this is exporting the post schema from here. Post has a relationship with the author and the categories. Okay, let's create a post service. Because binding these services to the controller is easy. You will write the APIs, get, put, post, delete, search. That all these things will be easy. So what we will do is I will use the copy of the user service into post service and I will change things here. Okay, I'm talking about post service here. So it will become post and I think post document. And I'm talking about post dot schema. Okay, and here, let's see if we have everything correctly. So I do have a post document. That is good. We are exporting this. So I can use the post document here, here. This is post model. Okay, and then here I can define all the methods which I need from the post service. Okay, we can actually use export class. Similarly, in the user service, we have to export this service so that we can use it in the modules. So post service. Uh, let's talk about it. So what we are going to do, we are going to define all the methods. So let's say simple method here we are going to do is a find one. Right, and you are going to receive an ID of type string. So what I'm going to do is here I'm going to do is a post model dot find one. There is already a method find by ID and I will pass the ID which is of type string and I can populate a lot of different things. Here in this case I can populate author, I can populate categories, right? Because we have a different relationships. Populate here I can do is author and then I can populate categories. Okay. So this will give me whatever I need from the posts. And then I can just check if post is not there. Okay, then not found exception, otherwise return the post. So that is find one. Similarly, let's do the create. So for the create, I think we can use this method. So there is a create method and we are going to do is we are going to get the post data and author 
author which is of type user because now we are creating a post so only an author can create the post so await this dot post model and inside this we can pass the whole object the object is the post data and we also have author which we are passing now what we can do is this is a created post so once I save this post what data I wanted to populate so created post dot populate all the things which I wanted to populate I will copy that here so I want to populate author and the categories once this is getting saved now I want to populate this I wanted to populate categories that's it and then dot save so this is just a simple create right what we are doing is we are creating the post we are populating it and then we are saving it so this kind this data the popular data will be populated once you are saving this created user sorry created post there is a typo and then let's say the update right update operation we haven't done so what we are doing in the update what we have is the id id of the post and then post data we will use dto's here okay this is the post data and this is how we are going to update okay let's remove all these things now in the post data what we are going to do is we are going to write a simple query await the this dot post model dot find one and update find one and, and replace that will directly replace this thing so we are looking for this underscore id right and then post data and if we don't find this id then the create the new one and once this is done you can do the populate all these things so i'm doing update and once the update is done populate the author and categories with the response and if i don't find this post then i will return not found exception otherwise i will just return the post so this is update and then this is simply delete i can write the delete here only so delete is a little different here in delete we can check the result so post model dot find one and find by id and delete is a method and you just need to pass the id nothing else these are all mongoose helper methods which are provided and they are going to help us in dealing with this if result result is like i think boolean so if result is false then not found exception otherwise if result is true that means it has been deleted delete or destroy or remove let's call it as a remove if you want to delete many let's say i am deleting re remove one remove many delete one delete many or it can be simply delete one instead of using delete keyword which is reserved keyword in javascript delete many okay what i will get is i will get the ids which is of type string array all right so what we are going to do is so we can simply say is await return await this dot model this dot post model dot delete many this is the operation and here we can pass id which is of and it is taking ids as an, an array that's it delete many is actually taking the string array to delete all these items return await this dot model dot many i think this should return a promise why it is not accepting it let's do the fix, fixing part 
this is talking about user model we'll import it and the last part is i think looks good okay so these are like the post service similarly we can write category service now you you understand how we are doing it i mean binding this with the controller is fine you can just write a controller write your apis and call these services one by one find one create update update by id delete one delete many and all right so how this is going to work you will write controllers and keep calling these methods there is one or another method we can write is uh, let's say the search in the the posts you can fire a particular query and then you can try to find the data right so you can also apply the custom filters that we will see how we can do that so post service post schema Sim similarly you can also write category service category service will talk about category right in category schema i think we do have so similarly we can write category service category controller post controller user controller so for user we are going to write uh, same like controller is all about okay login mechanism user login login api register api and then we are going to write some strategy JWT strategy local strategy to validate the user this is our user service we are going to use the methods like get by email get by id from the authentication module we are going to write here which will talk about login register after login you will receive a token and that token you will use to access all the other apis like creating a post creating category and all and each and every api we will always get the decoded payload in the request.user object so we will know which user is creating a post which user is creating category all these things okay so now we can work on authentication and we are going to write a simple authentication in nest.js with uh, mongoose and we are going to use user collection here user schema we are going to create user login user sign up return the token and then creating a auth guard for protecting our routes so i'm going to create a auth controller auth controller and auth service and auth dot service dot ts rest all the other things we'll keep adding uh, we would need a dto because now we are writing some controllers so here i can do two dto login dot dto dot ts register dot dto dot ts we are going to write a simple authentication mechanism using uh, using nestjs and Mongo, mongodb okay so login dto dto's are like the data which you are going to send in the payload for the login request for the register request right so it, these are simple classes export class login dto and here you will define your properties like public email which is of type string and public password which is of type string and you can also add some other annotations because email should be of type email i mean in the express we use validator class validator library or happy joy library to validate all these things here we are using class validator library and this should be coming from class validator this should be an email password should be a string right and is not empty and the last thing is the minimum length minimum length of this string should be seven or something right and we can import all of those things from the class validator so this is the login dto we can use same for register dto 
here we can add two more parameters so inside register DTO we will add first name last name okay so this is first name this is last name and we are going to use simple age string these can be optional also so we have created two DTOs which we are going to use in our controllers so in how to write a simple controller uh, controllers are also a simple classes right like uh, services and all and here we are going to use these annotations controller the controller name let's say auth right and then export class auth controller and inside this you will define the constructor and provide the dependency injection of auth service which we are going to write private read only auth service and here I can say authentication service which I will create this I'm going to inject so controller and all you can import from nest.js common and here we are going to use user model that we are getting from user schema so we have to go out outside of this folder and then we have users and user.schema okay whatever is required we will keep importing these things here like register DTO login DTO we will need so we will import from register DTO and we will get the login DTO from the login DTO full file okay export class okay these are not a default exports so this is register DTO and this is login DTO and we are good now we are doing dependency injection and how we can define the routes I will skip all the other things because this is something which we have already done auth register or auth sign up this will be become a part of endpoint and async uh, register this is the method this method will take a payload right so it's annotation body register DTO and the type because we have already defined the types in the payload so this async register and here we can call this dot auth service dot register and we will pass the whole payload register detail which is an object import the required things from nest.js common again import all okay so this is the register similarly we do have a login we can also define the status code and all so this is the register means user creation right import all the other things here we can call it as a login here inside this we are going to define the DTO as a login DTO and this will become login DTO and instead of register we are going to call login method and we will pass login DTO right there is some kind of a service you are going to call and it will return some payload the payload can contain some token right so this is how you are going to get the login so register and then login and for login we are going to use authentication guard that we will add later and then finally we are going to just call get method let's say I'm already logged in I wanted to get my own user authenticate a simple method we can call let's say we don't need to call a sync because we are going to return the data from the request object only because if you are logged in then we are going to 
add the user object in the request object and here request with user this is a new interface we can define so request with user is going to extend uh, the request interface either we can create another class uh, other uh, another interface so interface request with user is going to extend the request so this is how you can extend the request object received from express and this user is user document okay and this user is of type request user fix import get also we can import from nest just common and as user is already logged in logged in we will define some mechanism using auth guard so that the, the data is already available in the request.user for that we are going to use first of all http status it should be 201 this should be 200 I mean there are many annotations which you can use to make your apis look clean and here we are going to use auth sorry use guard and you can define you can pass the guard which you are going to use like jwt authentication this authentication guard will do a lot of things it will check okay after you are logged in you are sending the authorization header in the authorization you are sending the authorization header then it will decode the payload it will validate the token and it will fetch the the user it will decode the payload it decode the token you will get the user id it will trigger the query to mongoose mongodb okay do you have this user and fetch this user and put this user in the request object so it is going to do a lot of things jwt authentication guard and for the login for the login also we are going to use authentication guard which is local authentication guard okay and we are going to define them local authentication guard what it will do is it will take the login it will take the payload username password and it will validate it against the database user exists and all those things it is going to do okay and it will just uh, going to validate the user going to create the token once you are successfully logged in all those things it is going to do so first of all we are going to write authentication service controller we will keep adding more things first of all we will define these guards so let's say authentication service authentication service is a minimal what we are going to do is let's say I will copy post service because the imports and the objective of the service will be changed but service structure will be same auth service in the constructor we are going to inject the user service which we have defined here and now how we inject it simply because authentication service will call user service so private read only your auth service sorry user service okay sorry for the typo user service is the type and we will import the user service here and we are also going to in inject the jwt service which we are going to get from the nest js jwt and the bcrypt because we are going to decode the we are going to compare the password while doing register and login while doing register we will create a bcrypt version of password we will save it while doing login we need a some mechanism to compare it okay user service which we can get import it and then jwt service because we are using nest.js jwt these are the two services now we can define our methods which is let's say public async register and it is taking register dto
public async register and it is taking register DTO as an input we can import this and then what's going to be inside so first of all we are going to generate the hash password because we have already done the validation that password is required and it is there okay so const hashed password how we are going to do is await bcrypt which we are importing bcrypt dot dot hash register dto dot password first of all import this dto here okay this is a little slow which i really don't like register dto come on the salt value okay you got the hash password now you can pick it everything inside try catch so what we are going to do is simply return await this dot user service we already have dot create and inside this we are going to pass dot 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 register dto and we got the new password which so which we have to override so this is how we can create the user if we got the error through new internal server error exception or something else here i'm just giving a demo so i will just do it because there may be a different cause for this exception like you are passing the same email you are passing the same email in that case the mongodb will throw an exception that user with this email already exists so what you can do is before creating the user you can also do the check quick check okay does this user already exist or not now find by email i think in the user service we don't have this method so we can create this one okay there is already get by email i think we should use this not find by email get by email and what it is taking in the input user service dot get my email it is taking email as a string so we can call this method so this is going to work this is simple register right now wh what we do is simple login i mean these things are already covered i'm just covering this so i can just finish this thing and you can comment if you have any questions login dto what we are going to do to check the authentication is first of all we have to write one method to verify the password and all login dto here what we are going to do is this dot user service dot get by email so login dto dot email if we have the user if user is found then we are good otherwise we are not good if user is not found if user is there then we'll do this otherwise not found exception no user found with this email okay and here if user is there then we will do is await this dot verify password and what is the password plain text password which we are getting from login dto here we can destructure this and can get email and password from login dto so we can pass email and here verify password we are passing two passwords in the text format password and the user dot password and we can call one method public async verify password because this is in the same class and this can be a private method it is taking two uh, passwords uh, you can say text password and the real password and we are going to compare both of these so what we are going to do is each password matching const we can just return a boolean because what it does is we are going to use bcrypt await uh, bc bcrypt dot 
compare and it will take two passwords and it will return boolean so compare if it is returning true that means we are good if it is returning false that means we are not good that means the password is not equal uh, is equal or something like that if is equal is false then this will become true and you can throw an exception otherwise what you will do is you will return this user object okay we will do lot of things here okay we will not return the user directly we are going to generate the token for this user because now user is valid user right so we can actually do lot of things on top of that if it is not equals then bad request invalid email slash password something like this right so login duty i will import and we are not going to return the user we have to return the token so for that what we will do is we have to define a strategy how we are going to return the token so here login DTO will import this. So I have this. I can import this manually. DTO a login dot DTO. Okay, I will refactor this and then let's connect in the next next part of this session where, where we are going to validate the user and then we are going to write the strategies. Okay, so let's create a local strategy and GWT strategy. So what we are going to do, I will explain you the simple terms. So local strategy we are going to apply on to the, the login. Okay, instead of doing this because we have done this tons of times, what local strategy is doing is, uh, it will be used by our login controller or inside auth controller there is a login and it is going to use uh, the local strategy through the local authentication guard. And whenever you are doing a login, because this guard is there, once we are doing login, we should be able to capture the user object from the request. And how this is going to, how this magic is going to happen, that we will see in the authentication. So this is our request object and from this request object, we will be able to capture user and how that is going to happen with the help of local authentication guard and local strategy. What this local strategy is saying is uh, we are using this local strategy and through that strategy we are saying okay username field is email verify that and call this validate function internally okay let me just get the auth service and we have this method I think login is the method email password this is the method and this is a local strategy so we are going to create local authentication guard which is going to use this local strategy local authentic authentication guard extends auth guard and this authentication guard we have at the auth controller now we will talk about this one by one so we have to import the use guard Okay, this is resolved. Why it is creating a problem? Don't we have post? Okay, I put semicolon. That's really wrong. And what it is saying? Auth card at the controller level. So here is our controller. It 
let's get the authentication service here try to fix just these imports fixes and all okay this is resolved now jwt authentication card view card view jwt authentication card we will see now first we are looking at the local authentication card okay so this is this guard is actually invoking the local strategy we have defined here and local strategy is doing nothing but it is calling this authentication service dot login and it is saying that username field is this and uh, the login method it is taking the dto okay this is fine we can pass this as an object okay this will work like this we are able to log in now what will happen is inside a controller through this we will be able to capture the user object once we have the user object we can do a lot of things we can actually generate the token like this dot authentication service dot create token or something like that authentication service dot generate token and we already have a user object for that we can generate a token and through this we can return the token from the login request so generate token is something which we can define from the authentication service so here we can create a method public generate token and this is what it is taking is user id let's say user id we are not going to pass the whole payload and const payload which is a token payload so this is our token payload is going to be and we are going to create a token using this dot jwt service which we already imported dot sign using jwt dot sign we have heard about it sign and verify these are the two methods to generate the token verify to validate the token so token payload this is like an interface we can create which is nothing but uh, okay it is going to have a user id so i can create this simple interface okay generate token using auth controller now it will generate the token we will return it and send it in the response back okay this is what is going to happen in the login now once you register you do the login and rest we are going to use jwt strategy this is the local strategy only for authentication jwt strategy and jwt guard to actually um, now this you receive this token this token will start coming up in the authorization header we need to capture it and we need to process it we need to validate it and then we need to get the user all those things happens through the jwt strategy and jwt authentication guard which we have defined here so similarly local strategy local guard jwt strategy jwt authentication guard okay so now next step is adding the jwt strategy and guard so i have added that that is plain and simple two classes jwt authentication guard and this is a strategy what it is doing okay we did register we did login we got the token now and that token we are going to send in the authorization header and this jwt strategy provides a method using which you can extract the he authorization header okay jwt from request this is how we are getting it and this will decode it it will provide you the user id from the payload and here you can validate okay this user really exists or not here we are doing the validation after validating the token and then we are using this in the controller and the request.user will supply that because we are using passport it will serialize the user object on the request object so post login i mean post validating the token from the headers user object will be available and you can do whatever you want on this request object okay so this is all about the login mechanism how we are using the user service here to 
ver verify the user exists with this ID, with this email, all those things, how we are generating the token, how we are validating the token using local strategy and JWT strategy. This is a typical authentication mechanism using username password in Nest.js. Now it can be MongoDB, TypeORM, SQLize, anything. So now we can create the user module, okay, because we created a controller, services and all, but we need to bind all these things together using user module, right? So in the authentication, we can create authentication.module.ts and here we will define, here, here we will initialize our JWT module from Nest.js JWT. So it's going to be a little interesting how we define it and we'll also see some gaps and we can fill them. So this is our module and this is an object here we define all our imports. So you are already aware that we are dependent on the user module which I think we haven't created. This is the user module like uh, okay we already have so we can at least import it here because we are using user service in authentication service. That means we are dependent on user module from the authentication module. Okay, what else? We need passport module, Nest.js passport module. We need config module from the Nest.js and we need JWT module and we have to initialize it, right? So first of all, let's import all these things. Passport module from Nest.js passport user module from user modules and we have module system from nest.js common okay the important part is jwt module dot here also we need to dynamically initialize jwt module so we can do register async and we can do the same whatever we have done with the config service config module here it's a dynamic initialization import says we are using config module because we have to pass the dynamic environment variables to the jwt module so it's a config module and here what we are going to do is we are going to inject the config service and it is going to use factory and here we are going to use this method we will inject the config service so here we are going to provide the options for the JWT module to create sign and verify the token. JWT sign and JWT.verify requires the token like secret and the expiration time. So here we are using JWT secret and expiration time. If this is in additional option, sign options. This is very hard to work without intelligence. Let's see jwt module so that is coming from nest js jwt inside sign in option we can provide the expiry and how do we provide it expire in and here also we can provide the expiration time in seconds i think this will also be a config service dot get Config service dot get JWT JWT expiration time in seconds. Okay, so this is the initialization of JWT module, and here we are closing our imports. Now, next thing is providers. Providers will be array of services and the exports, and here we have a controllers. We define all our controllers okay in the providers we authentication service local strategy jwt strategy all these things 
auth service local strategy gwt strategy okay and we have only one controller which is auth controller now we are done with the module we can actually bind this with the class export class auth module this is the simplest version of it uh, okay user module is not defined we have to define the user module there that we will do it but this is how this is going to look like and because we also need to decode the token using jwt strategy so there is another option another argument we also need to pass is uh, so jwt strategy is uh, helping us to decode the token right so jwt from request and uh, there is another option we can pass secret or key and this is a config service so that's why we need config service because what we are doing we are decoding the token so obviously we need a jwt secret key to decode that so that's what we are passing here config service is injected here and this is our auth module now you understood that we are dependent on the config service so we will import that import from config module and config service also will come from there okay so now i think this will resolve all our er errors user module we still need to define but we don't need to worry about it now you can see we also added two more arguments jwt secret and jwt expiration time in the config module so go to our root module and we can add these two parameters right this we have to define here this is jwt secret is of type string and required and another argument is jwt expiration time that is also string and required that's it right we are using this config module from nest.js so we can also do the validation of that that all the environment variables are provided or not and same environment variable we can access using config service so if you look at the authentication module here we are doing a dynamic initialization of jwt module and we are injecting the config service there so config service we are injecting and through the config service we are able to access all the dynamic variables runtime variables which we wanted to access okay that's it guys so in the next video we can actually done the cleanup my intelligence is still running for identifying the typescript changes and resolving these errors so i will just clean this up and we will see the live demo okay so now we can see the quick demo on the authentication part so first of all we'll try to call it as a login register let's say okay and the api endpoint is something like this and it is post so you should be able to post the whole information right this is the email and this is the password and i'm using it to create a user user with that email already exists right that is a nice check which we have already have in the code so i will just change the email and we are able to create a user that's it now we can just use the clone of this or let's change this one only to login and we just need email and password we are just testing the login and register apis and we received the token that's it now this token can be used in further requests like we already have one request is get user once user is logged in so it says http get in authentication 
we don't need any payload in the header what we are doing is we are setting the bearer token authorization header and when you click on send what it will do is it will return the logged in current logged in user and we got the current logged in user based on that now what we can do is this is going to be used this or jwt authentication guard will be there on all the apis so that they will always be able to get the current logged in user because in the authorization header we are going to pass this bearer token okay so whenever you create a post category your identity will be there in the mongodb references and whenever you fetch it you should be able to fetch the posts categories and all the other information so this is just a quick and a simple nice demo whatever the authentication we have done with the help of nest.js where we have a login register and get current logged in user you can also use cookie based authentication system once user is logged in you can set the cookies and send the http cookies to the client side and in each and every request then client is going to send those http based cookies domain based cookies to the server and from the server you can actually decode the value of the cookie you are you are getting because if you see we are using this authentication guard and here we are getting the token from the bearer authorization header but you can extract the token from either cookies from some other options are also available here extract that from the cookies from the bearer token from header with scheme from the body field from the header or from the query parameter also from the url query parameter here we are doing is we are getting it from the authorization bearer token okay so this is a simple authentication of any api system where you are using username password now we have very nice and clean authentication system with auth zero octa and a lot of other things right you don't need to do all these things passwordless authentication system and all this is a basic authentication system so you can actually play with this code i will just come with the commit this code and that's it now we are done with the one playlist which is talking about all the different orm odm and all these things i talked about sqlized type orm mongoose with express and nest js apps right so this this is kind of over now now we are going to get started with totally new things which is graphql that is the next thing next big thing we are going to talk about graphql with the let's say yoga graphql and apollo graphql with the express and apollo graphql with the nest js right nest, using nest js you can write middlewares you can write just a simple graphql server talking to the existing rest apis and all this is the whole lot of new world we are going to explore in the coming videos and i i know there are a lot of playlists are running in parallel but i'm trying to finish my previous playlist so i can focus more on the latest and the brand new playlists